Got a nice job, but it's just a startup and I think you'd be perfect for it. And what's the business? Throw this on before you get out. Nothing much, dude. Another day above ground, you know? <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. I like yeah. that. <laughs> Where are you at? Uh, I'm in the OC right now working on a movie, but uh, I go back to Chicago for the premiere of the movie Thursday. Oh, you so. guys are doing a premiere out here? Yeah, I mean, well, kind of like, uh, you know, it's it's kind of like uh, we, we didn't want to do a premiere just due to COVID, but Okay. Uh, just now that the release is happening in Chicago, everyone's showing up to Chicago. So it's like an unspoken premiere, you know? <laughs> dude, invite me over. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> Are you in Chicago? Yeah. Oh, dude, we're doing it at the Music Box. Friday. Oh, it's Friday, a music Saturday, box? Sunday. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Come on out, dude. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh my God. Uh, totally. I, I will definitely do that. Yeah, yeah. I think tickets went on sale. Uh, last friday and i think the uh -huh. friday sold out but saturday sunday is still good man grab tickets you're Bring gonna be there all, all week are you gonna be there all weekend <laughs> yeah yeah oh wow is, is the cast anyone from the cast coming too uh i think gillis might who played jack yeah and then jacob alexander who played chandler is gonna be there there are gonna be some few of them around man i oh. think michael shannon's gonna do he, he might show up we'll see well, yeah, he's always around here anyway. That's that's his place, you know. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome! Hell yeah! <laughs> I'm so I'm man. I was so excited to talk to you about this film because, uh, you know, it just like it had me hooked. Like I was just hyped watching that whole movie from start to finish. It, it, it had me grasp from the from the start, man. That story, you know, the best story I think in all of this starts where. You started Columbia College, which I went to DePaul in the city, which is down the road, basically, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you guys in a neighborhood school. And I remember I used to audition so much as an actor at Columbia, you know, for all their student films and all this stuff. So I was thinking, yeah, I was yeah, going yeah. through my, like, thing. I'm like, did I ever audition for Seth at some point, you know? Dude, we must have crossed paths at some point. I mean, it's not that big of a film community. I mean, it's I, big, but it's like, you know, you're always one one contact away from someone. Totally. And it's like when you guys would hold auditions, it's like on this floor, it's like two rooms over, there's another audition, there's like multiple audition days going on, you know? Yeah, fun, yeah, yeah. Fun memories. Well, well, I'm glad I'm glad you enjoyed it, man, because, you know, honestly, we haven't shown a lot of people yet. And so, and so I'm just kind of nervous about it. So I'm glad you enjoyed it. Man, it, I tell you what, like, it, first of all, you based it on like, I didn't even know this stuff was going on in the area, like these sort of events. I mean, it, it tells you from the beginning of the movie, like these were news captions and all that, that stuff was going on. But uh, I, I think one thing about the movie, you know, I think we're probably in a similar age range here, but, you know, I'm like, shit, I came out of college, you know, DePaul, you out of... Uh, obviously Columbia, but I'm like, yeah, the job market hasn't been good, you know? And, and that was like a tough thing. I'm like, I can relate to this being of this generation. And two, um, tell me how you kind of mesh the story together of like, you know, the real events that obviously seem to take place and kind of the generational thing and, and really mustered up this, this yeah. of a clever storyline. Yeah. So like, I guess what really happened was like 2013 hit, I had just graduated Columbia. Mm -hmm. I had like all this student debt, you know what I mean? And yeah, I got I to know. the finish line. Yeah, yeah. I got to the finish line. And as you know, you know, there's no shortage of filmmakers in the industry. And so I got to the end and I was in all this debt. And then kind of serendipitously enough, I came across these kind of Chicago headlines of these college kids breaking into these wealthy homes. And like weirdly enough, I could like relate to their frustration. Mm -hmm. I got it. You know what I mean? Like for some reason, I felt like in tune with these guys. Um, and so I felt that angst and that rage and I just kind of took and ran with that idea of, and, and it kind of turned into echo boomers. Um, but I feel like a lot of people, our generation and younger, sadly, they're kind of coming into that age too, where they're hitting that, they're hitting that time where it's uh, all right, now it's time to pay that debt back. And, and they're kind of feeling the same thing. Yeah, no question. I mean, I haven't even started on my student loans, barely chipping away at it still. So yeah. I get it. And you know, the crazy thing about this is like, you watch this happen and you 
kind of side with these characters, which in a crazy way, like, oh, they're committing crimes. But you kind of you really understand their motives, because a lot of times you 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 know, you see movies and the criminals, oh, they make a case. But you understand the motives behind each and one of them. And it's laid out like you laid it out in the in story about why each and individual does the things they do and why they do it um which was interesting in itself too yeah and like one thing we really wanted to do with the film is like and i and i feel like you're going to relate with this a lot is like we wanted to ask the audience like if you were in this the, these guys position and you were offered this would you do it because i know a lot mm -hmm. of people like instinctively would be like oh no that's so bad i wouldn't do it but like answer it for yourself deeply would you do it or not and i think a lot of people would you know yeah i mean it, it, listen if if situation comes to it you can't make the bills you can't pay the rent you know what i mean at some point right. you, you're you're more amicable to, to things like that right you know i mean obviously the casting is just phenomenal from top to bottom I loved, you know what, I'm starting to like really, and the funny thing is I actually spoke to Haley last week about the film too. So, oh, okay. um, you know, it, the cast was so well meshed together. I mean, having Michael Shannon, as you know, he's like a, a legend in, in the industry and, and especially in Chicago here, kind of yeah. overseeing this group. But, but these young actors that really came together in this film, they really felt like they were believable. You believe that they, they were exactly like they were. Like I, I was so kind of blown away how these characters meshed and felt authentic. Cause a lot of times you kind of put together a group of, of younger guys or girls in a movie and you know, it doesn't feel realistic, but they really felt right. like kind of a band of misfit brothers too. Uh, how did you kind of go, go about the casting to make it seem like they would really slot into these roles and, and each of them really did? Yeah, we um so so Mike was the first one to really find the script and and uh once that happened we kind of took a step back and we were like how do we find this like next generation of uh like young actors like Mike like these are going to be the guys that are going to be one day as respected as him. And so when we took that approach it it took us longer than we expected to find the actors we wanted. I mean, it took us like three years to cast this movie. Wow. Yeah, just because we knew it had to feel right. You know yeah. what I mean? It had, it really had to be perfect. And we really wanted those actors that we knew could pull it off. And, you know, Patrick never has really had a role like this before. And, and after really seeing his stuff, you know, he, he was just like this talent that was just kind of like undiscovered. And so he mm -hmm. killed it. And there's this, you know, the guy that plays Jack is Gillis Geary. Gillis is amazing. He's like unbelievable, you know, Juilliard trained. Wow. Uh, and, he, and as soon as I saw him, I realized that like there are very few people who can play this role of like slowly, you know, teasing this character and slowly pulling him along the whole time. Um, and then Jacob, Jacob, the guy who plays Chandler, he was, uh, he's a Chicago guy. Okay. He's a big Chicago guy. Him and Mike are really good friends. They do shows together at the Red Orchid. Oh, wow. Uh, there you go. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And so, like, I just knew it would be a good fit. So, yeah. it worked out. So that's a Michael recommendation, too, right there. Yeah, know? it is. Yeah. It would, yeah, it, it really was. And, you know, and you needed that kind of like a strong, you know, girl, too, to, to hang with these guys. I thought Haley was awesome, you know, in, in that casting, too. Uh, you know, kind of being that she's the X factor in this group and in so many ways and, and her to like, you know, keep her handle her own with all these guys and really kind of take the charge there. That, I thought that was a great casting too. And, and her character yeah, and she, was awesome. Yeah, she, I, I hadn't, I didn't know about Haley before this casting process for Echo. Like I hadn't, I hadn't watched uh, Riverdale. Mm -hmm. And so once I started watching her stuff, you kind of realize she does have like this unexplainable, thing about her and it's great it's awesome and um and we kind of rolled the dice on her because we didn't have too much content to go off of but mm -hmm. as, as soon as she showed up on set you realize that like she was able to swim above water just as well as anyone else could so yeah and for me it's like i i kind of like really got introduced to patrick with uh daniel is in real that movie that movie it keeps you out of your toes yeah, uh -huh. and, and this movie too. I love the the kind of quiet viciousness that he had in a sense, and, and the quiet, 
he had so is his demeanor like is so different but it makes it so much more mysterious and imposing i love how he kept it straight throughout you know that that you constantly wonder what's going on in his head because he doesn't show it that much externally he keeps his composure I, I just thought he pulled that off so nicely uh throughout the movie and kept you on the edge as a viewer yeah totally and he just there's just something about him like the, at the very end that that scene in the motel Mm -hmm. when he goes outside it's just like oh my god i still watch that and get chills because he just did it so well he just brought something to it that just felt so relatable and real uh yeah, yeah i think i think patrick's gonna get swooped up by the superhero universe <laughs> in a heartbeat dude <laughs> no question i just hope he kind of stays with his genre because he's already chose some really cool interesting projects you know kind of early on in his career that that and this is another one that's kind of going to define his future in a lot of ways that you know initially you could think like oh he's a kind of a romantic guy lead because of his chiseled face and, and good looks but, yeah. but he can do so much more and i like how he's expanding himself as an actor to, to do these kind of roles too yeah definitely you know he really took a risk on echo and when we started casting and we started realizing the casting process was going to take longer than we expected, you know, we were so nervous that like it was 2016 and 2017, we were like, Oh my gosh, if we don't make this film right now, it's not going to be relevant. Mm. And then cut to 2020. And now it's like more relevant than ever. <laughs> Tell me about <laughs> which, it. Which which is crazy out, fate. Yeah. 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 You know, I wanted to ask you about the kind of the ending was really interesting in that sense that, you know, you have, in a sense, Alex's character kind of get away with it in a sense. And, you know, and the, the cousin gets away from it. He's sort of the mastermind all around it. But but Patrick and, and he kind of the, the people that you would expect in a sense were, uh, you know, that you felt for more as characters that had redeeming qualities, you know, that that showed heart were the ones that got punished. But the ones that kind of showed the vicious side that didn't show much heart are the ones that got away with it. I found that so interesting in that sense that, that uh, in a sense, the good guys paid the, you know, the, the fine the price. ultimate price it's uh, sad, of it's going sad. to jail. Um, how did you kind of come about that in, in that sense, uh, writing wise and just putting it together? Cause I thought it was a really interesting uh, twist. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things that we, we wanted this movie to feel realistic. Yep. And I feel the sad part of it is, and, and I hate to say this, but like, I feel like in the world, nice guys really do finish last. And it's so sad that like the guys that weren't the worst, the bad guys sometimes actually get away. And yeah. that just sucks. You know what I mean? It just sucks and it's unfair. And that's what kind of this movie is about, right? It's about this just like unfair world of like, you're told to do something your whole life. You get in debt. Oh, well, it's not our fault you did that. It's like, just such kind of a toxic thing and so we kind of wanted that ending to feel that way it wanted it needed to feel unfair yeah i feel like it does life's unfair you know and that's yeah the, and, and it goes back to the reality of these things that the story the moral here is that hey we we paid our dues in college and it's unfair that we can't find jobs so the ending really kind of ties it up together that you don't get what you always think you should in a sense or that you worked for to gain you know um, there's that side of it where like life kicks you in the ass again. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Totally. Man. I, I'm curious to know, just like, what are some of your interests and hobbies? Cause I always feel like filmmakers and actors bring in their actual life experiences. They have to, to make their projects rich and characters rich. What are some things you like to kind of do uh, in your free time when you're not collaborating or creating projects that, that you kind of yeah, get, get away to? I'm obviously a big movie buff, obviously. Okay. I normally go to the movie every Tuesday. That's kind of my <laughs> I thing. I love it. Every single Tuesday, whether my girlfriend, whether she goes with me or not, you know, <laughs> I'm going to the movies. Uh -huh. But um, really, man, I, I just, I don't know. I try to just really it, like do everything that I can for filmmaking. And then when you look at the clock, the day's kind of already over. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. so it's like that's kind of like you know i love i love living in chicago because you can live in the sh in the film world and not have to talk about it 24 7 yep which so i how love often, how often do you spend time out here i mean i live in pilsen oh there you go and that's yeah, a great yeah. community. That's such an artsy kind of eclectic community uh, i could totally see you in it yeah yeah dude i love pilsen um i love the west loop and uh, 
yeah, man, I really just, I really appreciate having kind of friends in the city who, uh, you know, I guess there aren't a lot of filmmakers in Chicago. And so it's nice to just like kind of go out and not talk film and then every single day wake up and like bust ass at it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, and you know, you paid your dues in a way. I mean, look at all the films that you, you know, you worked on in college too. And all the to shorts it takes to submit. Yeah, You rose in a sense from a ground up. I mean, is it more kind of rewarding now knowing the journey that, you know, you didn't have any handouts along the way. You didn't have any, you know, hookups or, or people to guide you. You really did the work, you know, to finally get noticed. Yeah. Worked at your craft to perfect it to this point. Yeah, it feels good, man. There, there were two people that really Byron Wetzel and Sean Kaplan are um, they're they're a part of my team, but they're also part of Michael Shannon's team. Hmm. And so, like the moment that they found this project and they saw my previous work, like those are the two guys that like really took it to the next level. Hmm. And they're the one who got Mike on board and they're the one who got Patrick on board and they're the ones who really like stuck their neck out for this project. But it was that like hard work, like you were saying, that base. Yeah. Of like, all right, this this guy knows what he's doing. He knows how to make films. Let's let's really give him, a, you know, an easy pitch to like knock this out of the park. Yeah. You know, you've gone through the rigors. You rented that equipment from Columbia and all the yeah. shit, those shot, <laughs> you know, little films outside of the school and all that. I know the grind of it. I mean, I've worked with these yeah, filmmakers dude. and you know, you respect the work that goes into it because there's a little payoff in the beginning, you know, it's it's a lot there's of none. Stress. yeah. You're begging your friends to read their scripts and they're yep. rolling their eyes, you know? <laughs> yeah, and, but you always need someone kind of a helping hand along the way to believe in you. And, yeah. you know, that, then you know that the, the work is legitimate. When, when you have people believing in you and extending that hand, you know, then you've accomplished something. And, so. and dude, dude, Chicago was like, without Chicago, this film would have never happened. I mean, that's where mm -hmm. I met Sean and Byron. That's where CMA, Chicago Media Angels, they're big investors in uh -huh. Chicago, they invested in Echo. Um, the guys at the Illinois Film Office, I mean, they made sure that like we got Union Station for the shoots and like kind of all this stuff. Like Chicago was such a help, dude. It's it's unbelievable. Yeah, I love the exteriors, man. I, I think you captured some of the great uh, areas. Like I know it was filmed that you Haley said it in Utah primarily. Um, but man, those those exteriors, if, if you're from here, you definitely you knew what to highlight. Dude, yeah. Well, see, I was, uh, you know, we shot in Illinois just because, or we shot in uh, Utah just because it was, uh, uh, you know, it's a non-union state. So for these smaller films like mine, mm -hmm. you can get like a lot more bang for your buck. But there was two weeks where, you know, I called the producers and I fought for two weeks in Chicago so hard just because like I knew that those people from Chicago would know it, feel it, love it. And I'm glad that it feels like it's in Chicago too. Which is yeah. Great. Yeah. I mean, the exteriors, you can, you can kind of cover up like the, the mansions and stuff, but like, yeah. when, I mean, the, the interiors, but the exteriors is what, what captures it, you know, it sets that feeling and tone. Like, yeah, this is, this is Chicago based, uh, you know, film and, and the feel of it. So that was awesome. Yeah. I was curious yeah. before we end here, um, where'd you find that, find that mansion at the end, man? That was one hell of a house. You know, I was Wasn't like, that Damn. Nuts, dude. Yeah, that one was one that we found in Utah and our um, our uh, locations managers showed it to me and he was like, he showed it to me very, very like, I don't know if I should show him this. And I mm -hmm. fell in love with it immediately. Uh, and he begged and begged and begged and begged and begged. And I still don't know what those people did like <laughs> for a job because like the house was brand new, like new, newly built. Wow. But it looked like it was built like a hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, that house was something else, wasn't it? It shot itself. <laughs> Unbelievable. It, it was a character right away. I'm like, my God, but, I'm like, I'm already thinking about different things this house could represent or be when I saw that when they enter kind of the, the initially, I'm like, this looks like a, a kind of a, a presidential house. I mean, man, man right. in, or, or just looks like a even old school kind of, you know, early 1900s kind of like, uh, you know, a great Gatsby kind of mansion. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally, uh, totally. It, it was so cool. Man, I like I, I genuinely love this film. I thought it was so interesting and cool. And I loved the, the vibe and the energy it had. It, it had constant energy throughout, you know. And thanks, dude. From, I'm so happy that you love yeah, it. Yeah, from I'm top so as happy. a Chicagoan, you know, uh, I really appreciate it. And I love the the shout outs to to 
to the community and uh, the story was just compelling all around. So like I said, I was just like from start, start to finish, I was like, this this is a hell of a movie and I can't wait to talk to you about it. Cool. Yeah. Come come out Saturday or Sunday, man. I, I will. I absolutely will. I'll, I'll come out this weekend. I'm going to check in with uh, Music Box and see and definitely. Yeah. Bring uh, whoever you want, dude. Bring yeah. whoever you want. This will be cool. I, I hope to meet you in person. That'd be awesome. Yeah, dude. That sounds good, Jim. Seth, thanks so much for taking your time. Uh, I'll spread time. the word on the movie, and uh, hopefully I get to get, get to see you this week. Cool. Sounds good. Take care, buddy. Talk soon, Jim. Bye-bye. This is the end. What did you do? We'd rather be dead than submit to the system. 